you've been using Flux 2 and feel like your results are just not right, chances are it is your prompt. Now, Flux is extremely powerful, but with the new update from 1 to 2, it behaves a little bit differently, and I want to give you 7 quick practical tips that will help you get noticeably better images. Tip one is to not use negative prompts. This is one of the biggest mindset shifts with Flux. Unlike the other models, Flux doesn't respond well to long lists of don't do this or avoid this. When you add a negative prompt, you're often introducing more confusion rather than clarity. So instead of saying what you don't want, try focusing entirely on describing what you do want and be clear and intentional about those things. Tip number two is to use hex codes or color values and be specific about them in your prompt. Flux is surprisingly good and interpreting the exact color. So if you just say blue, you might get anything from navy to cyan, but if you use a hex code like this example here on the screen in the prompt, or even describe a specific shade like a sage green, you're giving the model a much clearer target, and this is especially important for branding, product shots, or designs where color consistency really matters. Okay, tip number three is to be extremely specific with your wording. And I know that sounds a little vague, but give me just a second. Flux thrives on detail, specifically Flux 2. So vague prompts lead to vague results. Instead of saying a modern poster, you're going to want to say something like a modern editorial poster, bold typography, asymmetric layout, and then high contrast lighting. And you're going to want to be specific with the text that's in that poster as well. So the more intentional your language is, the more confident the output is going to be. So think of your prompt like art direction, not as a casual suggestion or like a reference you're trying to find. Tip four is a Kittle specific hack because we have a tool called Remix. And with Remix, you can adjust your image settings or image components without having to regenerate the entire image again. So for example, you might like the initial image you generated, but you just want to change the jacket color or the background of a product or the lighting in that image. And this is a huge workflow upgrade for Flux 2 and many of the other AI models that we have in Kittle because using Remix, you get to refine what's already there. You're going to get a lot more control, a lot more consistency, and avoid the randomness that comes with full regenerations. Okay, tip five is to use realistic and naturalistic terminology. Flux 2 responds best when you describe scenes the way that a photographer or a filmmaker would. So you're going to use words like soft natural lighting, shallow depth of field, overcast daylight, studio lighting. These kinds of words work better than abstract adjectives. So even if you're going for a more stylized result, ground your prompt in real world art direction language and that'll give it something bigger to build from. All right, tip six is to use reference images whenever you can. If you already have a visual style in mind, you can use a reference image, which is one of the fastest ways to communicate with Flux because Flux 2 does a great job picking up on a composition, the lighting, the overall vibe from a reference. This is especially useful for maintaining consistency across multiple images for matching or existing brand aesthetics. And you can easily do this by uploading an image into Kittle or use Kittle Flows to have your initial reference photo on an artboard and then add a smart board typing in a prompt to reference the image that's on that current smart board. And we have tons of bundles and templates that do this exact thing for you to see the entire flow. So you can check those out down in the description to get those prompts and get better generations. All right, our last tip, tip seven, is another Kittle specific one, which is to use Kittle's style library. If you're not sure how to describe a look in words, this is where the style library shines. Instead of guessing the right phrasing, you can apply a predefined style that already works with Flux 2. It's a great shortcut for discovering new aesthetics, speeding up your experimentation, or if you just wanna see how different styles translate into better prompts. And we have tons of styles that work with all of the different models. So if you select a style, it immediately selects that model. So at the end of the day, it's not about trying to trick these models with the prompts like Flux 2. It's about just being clear, which takes some practice, but the more you do it, the better you're gonna be at explaining your intent. So once you start combining these tips together and using some of these Kittle specific tools, you're gonna notice your images look 
more realistic, they look more usable, and they're closer to what you want. So we also have prompt bundles in Kittle Design specifically to help you get better at imagery in the style that you're going for. And if you're interested in that, I have linked them down in the description. And I also did a video a while back showing you those prompt bundles in the different styles. And we're going to be putting out more of those as well. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you check out that video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any updates and videos just like this one. And if you have any questions or comments about Flux or any of the other AI models or tutorials you might want to see using Kittle AI and design, make sure you comment those down below as well. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.